practitioner, advocate Khumuzo Moroka, shared her insights into his relationship with Nelson Mandela. George, in his second book, takes us on a journey with his friendship with Nelson Mandela, an all-consuming friendship. He was, in a sense, the surrogate parent while Madiba was in jail. He talks about how he looked after Zeni and Zinzi, how he managed to get them to Swaziland, how, I don't know how that happened, George, you ended up being at the Lobola Mahadi table discussing. I wish I was a fly on that wall while the negotiations were happening. But you also talk about the challenges when you had to talk to the government of the day, Kubi Kutsia on the one hand and Fandmeva, the ANC trying to convince the ANC that it is time to talk, that they can still have their confidence in Madiba and that he will not betray the struggle. But I suppose the books also tell of an amazing relationship between you and Tata. And I was witness, as Dikhang has said, to that relationship. And sometimes, as it would often happen, I would have complaints about George and I'd go to Madiba. And Madiba would say to me, George is my brother. And I'd also go to George and complain about Madiba. And George would say to me, well, you actually don't understand how this thing should pan out. But the two of them never took my side in all these years that we had a relationship, never once. Morocco spoke about the importance of law and justice. I was in an Uber coming here today, and I was trying to shorten this and read it through, George. And I asked this young man who was driving me, do you know George Bezos? And his answer really perturbed me. Because the young man said, well, I didn't do history at school, and I was born, I, di I didn't know apartheid. And I said to him, what has that got to do with anything? Don't you think you should know your history? Don't you think you should know how we fought, how, what we did? And I said to him, please go and ask your mother and your father, and go and read up. A people that doesn't know where they have been, where the sacrifices that were made, what sacrifices were made, is a doomed nation doomed to repeat their mistakes. I will not talk about where we are. I will not talk about law and what law and justice is, because sometimes the law and justice are distant cousins who don't even talk to each other. And we knew through the apartheid era that justice and law were not on speaking terms. But at the end of it all, we had men and women. George sometimes forgets to say that there were women. Occasionally he remembers. <laughs> but it was men and women who fought the struggle. And lest we forget. Lest we forget the sacrifices. Lest we forget the marginalized, the downtrodden. Lest we forget that we are not there and that Aluta continue. Morocco's relationship with Advocate Bezos was as a result of the relationship her father, Dr. Ntato Mutlana, uh, who had assisted Bezos with his work, came about. Morocco recalls how she had initially rebuffed the Greek-born lawyer's attempts to get her to join the bar. But may I conclude by registering my own thanks for the years of friendship, the mentorship, the walks we took during the Goldstone Commission of Inquiry in the Val, driving him around without pay. He still does it, phones me. <laughs> I need to go somewhere or someplace, and I say, George, I'm not going there. 
and he will say with a very sad voice, oh, are you not going? And I say, no, George. I don't, think, I don't know whether you got used to my father driving you and you think I should be driving you, but I still drive George. To the years, 15 years in all that we spend at the Judicial Services Commission, sitting next to each other, and there were times when I needed to ask very awkward questions. And I always knew it would sound better coming from a white person than this black female. And I'd write him a note and say, ask this question. And without fail, George would ask the question. I thank you for that. It was challenging, it was difficult, but we managed in a small way and we can proudly say we have an independent, transformed judiciary that is holding the line. <laughs> South Africa thanks you, George. Our country is going through a very difficult phase. I don't read the papers anymore, I don't watch TV, it's just too depressing. Dihang, in his own book, I'm my own liberator, talks about where we are. The inequality in our society, youth unemployment, corruption, and all those challenges. And we need to grapple with these challenges. And I believe you're still in the trenches, George, and I believe some of us who are lawyers here must continue to be in those trenches. Because if we do not, I think we're in trouble. But at the same time, we're tenacious people, we're hopeful, we're resilient, and I seriously believe that justice and equality will prevail.